American free enterprise is not just about inventing something new. It's about seeing new possibilities in what already exists. Radio had been invented by the Italian Marconi, yet modern radio came from the vision of an American entrepreneur, broadcasting pioneer, David Sarnoff. David Sarnoff was born in Russia in 1891. His immigrant family settled in New York's Lower East Side. To support the family after his father died, David got a job as a clerk with the commercial cable company. When he was denied permission to stay home on the Jewish holy day of Rosh Hashanah, he quit and joined the Marconi Wireless Telegraph Company of America. Marconi telegraphs transmitted messages in Morse code over the air. They are initially used to communicate with ships at sea. According to legend, one night of April 1912, David and some colleagues were mending the Marconi telegraph station atop the Wanamaker department store when the ocean liner Titanic hit an iceberg and radioed for help. For three days and nights, Sarnoff and two others worked the keys, relaying news about the tragedy. The event opened his eyes to the potential of wireless technology. His bosses at Marconi, now known as Radio Corporation of America, RCA, remained to be persuaded. Radio by now was transmitting voices. Sarnoff struggled to convince his RCA bosses to invest in a radio music box to bring music and other programming to Americans. Radio, he argued, was something different than the one-on-one -on -one communication provided by the telephone. Radio could reach a mass audience. The first million dollar gate in boxing history. To make his point, he arranged for RCA to broadcast a blow-by-blow -blow account of the 1921 Jack Dempsey, George Carpentier boxing match. And down goes Carpentier. Hundreds of thousands of people listened. Sarnoff won his argument. RCA started selling its new radio boxes to this exploding home market. Sarnoff was promoted to general manager and founded the National Broadcasting Company. NBC, the very first radio network. With landmark broadcasts from Lindbergh's return after his historic transatlantic flight. Lindbergh is coming down as the gang fans. To the 1936 Olympics. Some thousand are away and Jeffy Austin down there without that To dramatic serials and performances by Bob Hope. The Pepsodent Show, starring Bob Hope and his guest Humphrey Bogart. NBC ushered in the golden age of radio. Sarnoff soon began work on a new innovation, television. At the 1939 New York World's Fair, NBC unveiled the first television network. The debut broadcast featured the opening day ceremonies, including a speech by President Franklin Roosevelt. The audience was small, but the impact was enormous. For the first time, Americans as a single audience could witness news and events as they happened. Broadcasting transformed political campaigns. It made the arts more available to people in remote places. Sarnoff's television and radio networks changed the world, much like the internet has changed our world today. Sarnoff continued with other innovations, like color TV. David Sarnoff was a futurist who predicted a wide range of developments, from the growth of public opinion polling to the fall of communism. By the time he retired, he had built a media and technology giant that transformed the way we communicate, from one-on-one -on -one to one-on-many. David Sarnoff recognized that broadcasting was the future, and he helped make it happen. I'm Steve Forbes.